Hello, good morning, and welcome to my channel. So today, we're going to visit Valletta. So this is my day off. So I'm going to show you what Valletta looks like. So it's like a mini travel guide I'm going to do. So you would know the beauty of Malta, especially their main city, Valletta. All right, see you. Okay, so the first stop is we're going to visit the main um, attraction here in Valletta. So before you see the city gate, you will see the Triton Fountain. This is the usual meeting place for people here in Valletta because it's next to the bus station. So it's much more convenient. I'll show you. the next stop this is the city gate of Valletta so this is the entrance to the main city Next up is the Parliament of Malta, so where they conduct their meetings for legislation. And also you see this one when you pass the city gates of Valletta. So now the next stop is, I'm going to show you the Royal Opera House here in Valletta. So here is the place where they conduct any performances like choirs or theater arts. And also they have the display of their paintings for um, different artists here. So now, we are going to the upper barracks. It's like a garden here, but on the upper side of Valletta. And also, from there, you can see the Grand Harbor with the three cities here in Malta. Okay, so let's see. So this is my background. You're going to see the three cities here. So that would be Bormla, and there would be Isla, and also Virgo. So this is the Grand Harbor. And also, 
for you to enter this place and to see all the cannons, you're going to only pay 3 euros. It's not quite expensive, so it's really a nice view as well to see the Grand Harbor. And also, there would be someone from their team to explain how to load the cannon, how it come about in this place, and also the history. It's quite a long history as well. So, later on, someone will explain it for us. Okay, see you! Basically, we are an organization known as Fondazioni Words Partner. We are a non government, and uh, our main goal is to take care of various historical sites around the island in, in which our foundation takes care of. Such as these sites include the Saluting Battery, we have the War Headquarter Tunnels, the Las Caras War Rooms, which is 40 meters under the Saluting and the Upper Baraka Gardens. We have the Unfinished Bunkers, which is near the Las Caras War Rooms. We have Water Fall Museum in Virgo and Portinella in Atacara and various other sites which are under restoration uh, uh, process basically. Now, basically, here we fire the cannon at 12 o'clock and 4 o'clock. Uh, why? Because this is a tradition which goes back hundreds of years ago, uh, which we are keeping it alive, so to say, because during the British period, this is how they used to track time. But saluting, that first started during the Knights period in 1640. Mm. This was basically to give the um, um, to to give uh, time signaling guns uh, certain hours of the day, like lunchtime, prayer, uh, daily hours of work, the curfew of the capital city of Malta, and as well to alert sailors on on their sh on, on ships to check their chronographs to, to check to, to ensure themselves that, that they were uh, on time. So that is the bit, the purpose behind this how they used to track time by shooting a cannon. Most of these types of cannons were used in, uh, uh, in ditches in the defense of fortifications. Now, the firing procedure itself basically starts like this. So first we start by using this. This here is a brass stick known as a pricker. The aim of the pricker here is to place it inside the vent, inside the vent button, vent tube, Make sure if it's completely empty. The next thing I have to do is to open the breech. And I take another look just to make sure if it's completely empty. Unwanted objects have to be removed at all times. If you want, you can take a photo. Once more, you can take a photo and you can see how it looks like. And you can have that lovely smell of gunpowder. The blank cartridge and my hand on my hands. I place it inside the vent. And I use the picker to pierce the gunpowder to make a hole. Once this uh, procedure is done, once we have loaded it, we have to close the breech. Now, we only fire one cannon, but we load another one just in case if there's any problems on this one, which is like uh, previous firing or this firing. Now, the next thing we have to do is we have to explode it. How? By using these. <clears throat> this is the percussion cap holder or the trigger 
and this is the fuse well, don't worry it's not a live one it's completely dead so i don't i'm not going to send you to the hospital <laughs> okay but however this is what a percussion cap looks like a live fuse this is made out of mercury and this is the tube which is filled with gunpowder you see these black spots that is filled entirely with gunpowder even if i drop this this would make a very small spark not a loud bang mm -hmm. okay now we have these attached together now something very important when we are when these two are attached together we have to place them very carefully and we have to use i have to use my hand so i prevent the trigger from hitting the percussion cap because imagine <clears throat> if i done something like this for example let's say the trigger just fall down like this all of a sudden and i would have sparks and burns on my face and worse to worse i would go blind so safety here is important so that's why i have to use my hand so i will prevent this from hitting the percussion cap now this is the last thing that we need for the firing this is called a lanyard which uh, consists of an iron hook, a rope, and a piece of wood. Again, place my hand, and gently also placing the hook on the trigger like this. Once everything is in good shape, I do a right turn. You step to my right. When they give me the order to fire, I will say evening gun fire. Or if I'm firing at four o'clock, I will say evening gun fire. By pulling the lanyard, trigger will fall directly onto the percussion cap and we will have a neat explosion. So that is basically how the firing procedure of these types of cannons work. I think here in particular this is a monument. This is limestone and this is the rocky type that mortar has limestone. And limestone is a very uh, powerful rock indeed. You can see the monument is in a Greek style form and here someone was buried he was a royal engineer who was very important for the Maltese and his name was Henry Anderson Marshall. This, was, uh, this is basically what's left of it. Uh, obviously, during the Second World War, his body parts had to be removed because this was the main target for the Italian and German air forces during the Second World War. These cannons, especially on the, on the muzzle loaders, they would have to use side arms in order to clean and to fire, which we have to do an example. For example, you have also here, if you want to take a look, I will give you an explanation of how they are released. For example, the spiral thing is known as a worm. So the worm is to be placed on the inside to make sure it's completely and to fish out any unwanted objects. The ladle was to load the cartridge, which you can see over here, and the projectile. And before it's fired, they would uh, put the rammer inside to put everything inside over here. After it's fired, they would have to clean it with the brush and the sponge to clean inside because in battle you would have a lot of repetitive firing as well. We're going to pass where it's known as the house of the prime minister here in malta also it's named as piazza castilla so they also conduct their meetings here it's a big place so let's check it out
So now, I am here at the center of Valletta where they celebrate big events, for example, like New Year's. So most of the people come here during the New Year to have the countdown and then celebrate the New Year in this place. Uh, this is really a big place here in Valletta and most of the events um, are held here. For example, like concerts, uh, rock bands and also other uh, big events. We're going to visit the uh, Valletta Food Market. So it's also known as Isuk Talbel. So it's like a um, stalls of foods. So there's Asian food, there's Maltese food, there's Italian food as well. And also there is a Filipino food inside the uh, food market. Let's go!
Okay, so that's it for today. And I hope you enjoy my mini travel guide vlog regarding Valletta, Malta. And hope to see you again soon to my next videos. I will show you more of the beauty of Malta and how's the life here. Okay, see you next time. Bye!